and okay Ernest um, as we start now I'd like you to introduce yourself to the camera where you were born in Salem yeah well I'm Ernie Rangrin so they call me I'm really Ernest Rangrin I was born in Manchester uh, in June 19, 1932 Yes. Okay. Right. Um, so, Ernest, let's talk about how you first picked up a guitar. Well, I saw my uncles, they used to play, and um, I eventually watched them, and whenever they were out, I tried to play. I'm really self-taught. So, when did you first start playing professionally, so to speak? Was that when you came to Kingston? Yes, and um, I started to study the thing properly from books uh, at the age of 14. And um, oh, about a year after that, I was in um, uh, Val Bennett's band. So I started from Val Bennett's band, but I was still studying from books. Well, I still, I am still trying to study, you know, to learn things too, yeah. Who else was in Val Bennett's band with you then, Thomas? Uh, let me see now. Wow, it's a, such a long while. Uh, I call him Prince of, uh, Mr. Bob. Uh, it's an alto player, I'm trying to remember his name, you know. Yeah. And then we had Lester Williams. Uh, we have Chick Roy, little Chick Roy. And we had... Um, we call him the Hunch. Uh, I can't remember his name now. Um, All right, don't about two more trumpeters, you know. Okay, yeah. so when you, when you started playing with Val Bennett then, the scene those times was really jumping with big bands. Yes, yes. We used to play stock arrangements. But, well, um, what we really call stock arrangements, it would be like what, whatever all those big bands play, Duke Ellington, name it. And um, they come in the um, same stock sheets that every band can get the same music. And whoever plays it best, well, you know, so something. So, what were some of the bands playing around Kingston around then that, that were using these arrangements? Um, some of their, if you could call some of their names. Well, I'm um, like Roy Coburn, George Alberga, uh, uh, Eric Deans, uh, Sam Val Bennett. Uh, uh, Jack Brown, Roy Coburn, and uh, many, many more people, you know. And, and who was the best out of those bands, in your opinion? Jack Brown, because I think, um, well, he was a he was a he was a musician who could uh, do his own arrangements for his uh, orchestra, and I think that's what. Um, a band leader should have so that ability to do that. So I look forward to Jack Brown for that, and I, that's how I rated him. Right. Then you started playing after with Val, um, Val Bennett. You started playing with Baba Mato. Yes. Um, no, I went to Eric Dean's. Right. Yes, and um, was for a while with Eric Deans, where we even went to Haiti, we brought back the mambo, and you know, at those times, the mambo and uh, merengue was a beat that was just coming in. And then after that, I left and I went, went to um, uh, Baba Motors group. And I was, I played with Baba Motors for a while. We were the first people to open Montego Beach Hotel, and um, so forth, you know, and, um, uh, we, um, now we have the Reverend Cook, who is a trumpeter. He's still a trumpeter, and um, he was the, the trumpeter and bass player into that group too. His name is Reverend Billy Cook. Yeah, yeah. I'm Bob. Yeah. Um, so, Coney Park would yeah. be one of the venues that those type of those bands would play. Uh, Coney, Island. Coney Island. Yeah. yeah. Well, Coney Island, no. Um, you have smaller groups that play at Coney Island, but uh, sometimes you meet some good bunch of musicians who who play there, you know. And um, then it's good that as a young fellow, I could learn 
some of the tunes while listening to what they play, you know, and that's part of my learning process too, you know. <laughs> And you were teaching other guitarists as well at this time? Well, yes, I have taught many, many, many guitar players that I can't remember. Bass players too. <laughs> I'm not much of a bass player, but I, I have an idea so I could, you know. <laughs> right, so this went on all through the 50s? Yes, yes. And coming up to the end of the 50s then, you met up with Chris Blackwell? Yes, um, at that time I had my own band, a little quintet, and um, I was at uh, the Half Moon Hotel, and um, that's where I met him, and um, that's where I started in Island Records, and I think that's where Island Records started too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that was. 1958? Yes, about that time, yes. yes. As you could say, that was in 1958. Yes, 1958. Yes. Um, so you made out, you began making albums? Yes, uh, the first album was with Island, uh, with Lance Haywood, was uh, part one side and I was on the other side. Second one was um, Lance, I think now, um, Guitar in earnest, and um, Lance Hayward, I think, was making albums at the same time, too. And um, then, you know, I was the arranger for the company, a musical arranger. And you'd arrange all, all the singing, uh, there were some vocal tracks coming out then as well by people like um, Owen Gray, right? Yes, yes, Owen Gray, um, Boris Gardner. Wilfred Edwards and a few more people and um, finally Millie Small. <laughs> so with Millie Small obviously you went on to make the um, My Boy Lollipop. Well that was, uh, yes, yes. That was later on. I mean yeah. we, we talk more about the earlier Jamaican days you know, yeah. at, the, at the moment and we'll come on to that later. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so the late 50s now, we have um, other Jamaicans getting into the music, recording. Yes. People like um, Mr. Clement Dodd yeah. and Duke Reed. Right. And um, yes, they were the, uh, more of foundation um, producers. Yes. So you, you worked for both of those men? Yeah, I worked for, for Studio One, Clement Dodd's, and I worked for um, Treasure I label. I work for um, uh, Gay Feet, and uh, I was the musical director for um, Federal Recording Company at that time, during that era. So you would run the sessions as, a mu as the, you would be the lead musician? Yeah, well, I was generally the arranger. And you'd, write, you'd show everyone their part? Their yes, part. You, however it is done, you know. So you had the parts down for everybody? Right? Well, most times, are, we're, if, if it's not necessary, you know, and whenever it's necessary, you know. Um, I mean, what was it like making sessions with Buster, for example? How would they, how would they run? I mean, would he call you with, and say he wants to make a session and you have to be there or rehearse and all that? No, um... I remember doing his very first set of records for him and um, I was working at JBC at the time. I was a studio um, uh, musician for JBC and um, he, uh, we did his recording, very first set of recordings there and I was really his arranger for that recording. Who was the other guys in the band on, on those on that stage? I know Roland Alfonso because Roland Alfonso was one of the guys who uh, I played with for many years. Um, maybe you could have said that I taught him a lot of things. I hope, <laughs> you know, and um, and uh, guys like Rico Rodriguez and so forth, you know, yeah. Um, 
Okay, let's take a little break there then. Yes. Yeah. All right. I just, just want to have a little one. No, not yet. I have one hide up the same. No. <laughs> Rolling and yes, Steve. Okay. So, your first professional job was with Val Bennett, Ernest. Yes, yes. What kind of a guy was Val Bennett? Well, Val Bennett was a real nice guy and he was always very happy, you know. And, um, Everything he does is like extraordinary. His, his pants in those days, you know, it was close to the, you know, and his own must be very close and it, his coat is very tall, like um, Cap Galloway. He was like a Cap Galloway type of cat, you know. But he was a very nice guy, nice guy. We really enjoyed playing with him. And, um, you know, he, he was a good saxophone player. He was a tenor sax player. And he was really, you know, um, he liked Tex Beniki, that's who he liked to, to play like. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was good fun playing with him. Okay. Yeah, nice, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, some of the other people. Um, George Alberga, I've never yeah. heard that name before. Yeah, George Alberga, he had a very nice band, uh, you know, but um, I didn't get to... Um, be among him a, a, a lot, you know, because Just yes, yes. yes. And um, Red vs Cook. Red vs Cook. Yeah. These bands were they big, big bands? Like yeah. Four saxes or yes, three, yes, yes, kind of, yes, kind of yes. Style. Till eventually, you know, as time goes by, the bands got to cut down because of economic situations, you know. So. Eventually, I guess that's how Combo came in, you know. <laughs> that, you know, have these little groups and people prefer to hire a smaller group because it would cost less to, to, to have them for the night or whatever. Right, because the same thing happened in the States as well, you know, yeah. the big bands gave yeah. way to something that I know is very influential on you, bebop. Oh yes, oh yes. Could you give us a little piece on what bebop means to you? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, I really like um, what um, Charlie Parker and um, the great Dizzy Gillespie, you know, what they did. And, um, you know, those two people were two of my idols. And um, I would Powell people like those, you know, and, you know, I really enjoy <laughs> those people and uh, I love that type of music too so I try to play that music too. And they kind of gave you the conception that you now have which is you know made you one of the great guitarists of the world you know? <laughs> well, well I don't know of the world but I try to play. <laughs> <laughs> Um, right, well, take a yeah. Thank you. Some of the sessions like It Hurts to Be Alone, The Wailers. Oh. Where you take the, you, you play the main solo in that tune. Yeah. Can you remember um, that session that day, some, some of the things about that? Well, um, it was Bob Marley, uh, uh, um, the, the Wailers, uh, where were they? Um, or oh, great uh, guy who died there, um, was it, um, Peter? Peter Tosh, yeah, you know. Uh, well, um, I think Bonnie Wheeler was, was in it too. And um, was it Brad Witt? Junior. Yes, Junior, Brad Witt. And um, I think, you know, one, one of the guys who was instrumental in bringing them to the recording was um, is Richard is yes piano but then they didn't um, it was done otherwise just guitar bass and drums instead of piano and um, but Richard is was a person who was instrumental in bringing them there you know so just the four musicians today yes it was just bass drums guitar I think that's all it was bass drums and guitar yeah um, that was their f 
first good uh, hit that they ever made, you know. And one take of that? Just one take? Uh, I don't remember if it was just one take, but uh, it could be, could be. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> yeah. Uh, this thing started with Cox and Dad, and because I used to play for, I was one of his arrangers, you know, and um, I used to work for the company too, and um, the uh, Claude Johnson, you know, used to play with, with along with me, you know basis and um so we were good friends and well Cluet was my band member anyhow he was my basis and um so we had a meeting one sunday <laughs> in kingston and um coxon you know and we decided that well in those days we had this um shuffle rhythm like um uh, what is uh, like? I um, uh, can't remember most of these organists that used to to play all, um, some of those um, shuffle rhythm tunes. You know? No, no. I mean like foreign. Uh, but used to be, used to be, used to, you know, like Johnny McGriff, Bill, uh, Bill Doggett. Well, yes, people like those. And um, so. We're getting into that shuffle rhythm and Louis Jordan and people like those. So we decided, to see, we said, well, with this shuffle rhythm, we could, we could formulate a ska beat from it. And this is how the ska beat came in, because um, if you notice, the, 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 the second beat was much more emphasized. And, and that's, it's really from the shuffle that you hear from the, the rhythm and blues tunes. You know, so it's really from rhythm and blues that we formulated this rhythm of ska. That's how it came in. And um, the man who was really instrumental of it, it was Coxon, myself, and Truett Johnson. So that's how that, that bee came in. <laughs> okay.